just a quick little video here to show how some of the stuff that you're learning has affected history and its relationship to the future and other subject areas. So some interdisciplinary connections, if you will. So this dude that we're looking at right over here, his name is Edward Jenner. And you may have heard of him before because he helped to do the research that led to the development of the smallpox vaccine. Now, vaccines, we could talk for a long time about vaccines. There's a lot of controversial things about vaccines. You've heard about the HPV vaccine. You should know that you've taken a lot of vaccines when you were a kid before you go on certain trips to certain countries where parts of the world uh, are more commonly affected with things like malaria. You may have to take certain types of things in order to prevent you from getting those diseases because those are places that you wouldn't normally travel to. So a lot of interesting connections and you can keep spreading out with all this information. But let's just uh, focus on this guy right here and the little hand sticking out the side of his face. So cool stuff. He developed uh, the smallpox, vac smallpox vaccine. And as a result of this, smallpox is pretty much gone or eradicated from the globe. There are some uh, random cases that show up every now and then, but for the most part, um, this could have been something that would have, would have wiped out the entire world, but because of the development of things like a vaccine like this, uh, the disease has been eradicated. So Edward Jenner, this is how he did it. He infected an eight-year-old boy with cowpox, a slightly different variant, and he found that that kid, once he had the cowpox, didn't actually get smallpox, so wasn't able to actually get infected with um, smallpox, and so that's where the immunity part comes in. So because of the antibodies that this little boy produced as a result of getting cowpox, he ended up being immune to smallpox because there are some similarities between them. And he thought this is awesome. Nowadays, if somebody did this, uh, they'd get in a lot of trouble. So the kid was too young. Uh, they didn't test for side effects. It was kind of a, a guinea pig, kind of a rabbit in the lab kind of thing. So you can imagine back in those days, there were a lot less regulations on what was considered okay in terms of doing testing on humans. But then, if you want to put this into a debate, uh, if you want to go T-OK with all of this, maybe the development of a, of a vaccine, maybe that wouldn't have happened if this wasn't allowed. So, I don't know. It opens up a lot of different questions about what is ethically acceptable. Nowadays, there's a lot of discussion that goes on. There are rules and laws that prevent scientists from going crazy and just kidnapping little kids and doing little uh, experiments on them for the sake of science. But um, we are thankful that there are some regulations around. And I guess we cringe when we hear about, you know, scientists kind of breaking the law and having their secret labs. There's some TV shows that have kind of been based on that. I watched this one called The, the OA. Uh, I guess that stands for the original angel. Anyways, some kids were basically captured and this scientist, really smart guy, was doing tests on them and like killing them and then shocking them to revive them and then see how that affected, I don't know, um, after, what is it called? After death experiences, out of body experiences or something like that and trying to document what was going on. Anyways, sorry about that. Uh, if we go on a little bit, we're just talking quickly about this word epidemiology. All you need to know is that epidemi epidemiology is the study of the distribution and the patterns and causes of disease in populations. And uh, you can look at global patterns. I just pulled this image off of Wikipedia. Um, I think this is actually showing the global distribution of deaths related to eating disorders. So not related to polio or smallpox or anything like that. But for any type of disease uh, inherited or communicative, communicable, um, meaning that it could be passed through from person to person by pathogens. Um, we can do this with all of them. That's epidemiology, the study of the distribution patterns and causes of disease in a population. And as a result of that, you can start to plan um, vaccination programs where a vaccine is required. Um, I think... Yeah, epidemiology. So, for example, there was, I think in the 70s, late 70s or 80s, um, there was something that had to do with iodine shortage. So, if you know, I think this is in the old syllabus at least, but if you don't get enough iodine in your diet, 
your thyroid gland can expand and become turn into a goiter, basically. And so as a result of studying some of these things in the U.S., they started adding iodine to salt. So if you're in America, actually, I think this is true for most of the salt around the world, unless you're a fancy chef type person and you only buy like untouched sea salt type things. Like I use a type called Malden when I'm in my fancy cooking mode. But other times when you just use regular table salt there's actually iodine that has been added to it here in japan if you're eating a lot of seaweed you get plenty of iodine but for people who don't eat a lot of seaweed and there's certain fruits and vegetables that have some of this stuff but but for most people they're not getting enough iodine in their diet so the u.s government and now a lot of salt companies around the world have actually added iodine into your salt so check out your salt packages they should say uh, iodized salt and that has globally you know fixed this problem of people not getting enough iodine in their diet but there are still some places where people don't get plenty of stuff in their diet and malnutrition is still kind of a big issue all over the place so anyways epidemiology is something that you can study in the future but it's a good link to show how these individual research initiatives that are being done can be used to try and solve global problems.